Penelope Houston, who is my guest today. Penelope, are you there? I am here. Hi, how are here. you? I'm doing well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for making the time to talk to our listeners today. I know that you have a very busy schedule and you're on the West Coast, and that sometimes makes it undoable for, uh, <laughs> for prospective guests. So thank you for biting the bullet and doing what you had to do. So how are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. I'm getting excited about the um, upcoming European tour and the New York State, and uh, it's been a good summer. Excellent. And uh, so you are playing at the Bell House in Brooklyn on August 4th, and then you're flying to London. So uh, on behalf of all New Yorkers, I want to thank you for doing that, because that's got to really screw up your schedule. Like, <laughs> you know, I just... It, well, half of the half of the Avengers live on the West Coast in, in the San Francisco area. Um, I live in Oakland. And then the other half live in the East Coast in Brooklyn and Boston. Oh. So we decided to, you know, cut our travels in half by doing one show in New York um, and picking those guys up and then flying from New York um, to London. Oh, that's so fair. It's just, it seems it just seems like fun, and uh, we played the Bell House once before, and it's a lovely place, and it just seemed like a really good opportunity. Oh yeah, it's a it's a great venue, and uh, you, I'm glad that you're going into it saying it seems like fun because I'm like, oh my god, that'll be a nightmare the next day. Are you um, <laughs> are you renting gear in New York? How is that going to work logistically? Uh, that's a good question. Hopefully, <laughs> the Bell House will be supplying gear. Our drummer lives in Brooklyn, so he's going to supply his own, I'm pretty sure. Oh, good. But we will have to start that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I think I still have to start that out. We're playing with a lot of interesting bands, though, on that bill. Um, Shell Shack is one of them. Mm-hmm. They, that seem, they seem really interesting. And then there's another, there's a couple more. His name's escaped me at the moment, but oh, I'm sure you'll see. be able to look it up. Yeah, I'm going to go over your um, the tour for the listeners. I'm going to go through the whole tour listing after Penelope is off the air because she doesn't have a whole lot of time. Um, and uh, anybody who has any questions can post on our comments board now, and I will either ask uh, Penelope or I will answer them once, once we finish talking. Um, so even though the Avengers you know, lasted two years, which was a huge impact on the music world. What did that initial experience provide for you as a writer and a performer moving forward? Because you have not stopped, if I'm correct. Right. Well, one of the great things about the Avengers is that we were in 77, we were at a moment where everyone was just creating their own scene and making up their own musical rules and aesthetic rules and there were no there were no limitations so that's the great way to start one musical creativity is to feel like you know we can do whatever we want we can look how it, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if we're not too you know if we're not virtuosos on our instruments we could just do it so that was a great way to start um, one's career and because of that and also, I guess because of my mom, I have felt that I was capable, capable of whatever I wanted to do. So that was good. Awesome. And and uh, would you, and I guess what I hear, like we just listened to um, two very contrasting songs, right? We just heard on Market Street, and then we heard your live version um, of I Believe in in Me. But... In both of those songs, what I hear is compassion for others. I mean, in two totally different ways. You were just like screaming like leadership and the DIY ethic in I Believe in Me. Like this, you know, like for people to 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 man up and, and make a difference in their own lives. And then I can see you being right there in the humanity um, of, of the poor and... Um, the 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 people in the on Market Street song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, certainly, I you know grew up feeling like you know you have to <laughs> you have to uh, 
find your own voice and believe in yourself. Um, so as a 19-year-old or 20-year-old, when I was singing that version of the song, um, I was, you know, I fiercely believed in myself. <laughs> and I think that's what the song conveys. Whereas on Market Street uh, is really the result of a lot of exposure to um, the people of the Civic Center area of San Francisco because I work at the Central Library, the main library. And um, I've just had a lot of... Uh, I've ha- had a lot of interaction with people here um, who are homeless and or desperate or, you know, challenged in different ways. And... Um, that song, I, I would doubt anyone could could work here without some kind of sense of compassion. It would just, it would just drive you crazy if you didn't have it. Mm. So, and the song is also a bit about religious hypocrisy, which is something I think I touched on in The Avengers as well with Corpus Christi. Yes. Um, and, you know, that's one of the subjects that I've, Feel strongly about, um, and a market street seems to have, seems to have touched a lot of people. I wrote that song. It was the last song I wrote for the album. I wrote it when we were already started recording the record because we needed one more song, and then it ended up being the title track. Mm. So it was just one that people connected to, and I'm, I'm happy about that. And. So you have a huge disc- discography with the Avengers and and solo. Would you say that there's an underlying sentiment overall, or how has that shifted? I'm sorry, the, your question was like through throughout your career. Just what's the underlying like feeling? Would you say that? I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but in terms of like the Avengers, and then you're you you've really. Um, God, I hate the word matured. (laughs) That's not really where I'm going, but just more of like in terms of like stream of creativity or um, uh, just like an underlying sentiment. It 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 always felt to me like the Avengers, like you were just like punching things all the time and 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 talking about you know things that were unjust and and wrong. Um, has has that shifted? Has your, I guess, verbal dialogue or even poetry, like your lyrics? I think that I don't see things as uh, black and white as I used to. But I have to say that doing Avengers um, shows and singing these old songs of mine feels right and feels really good and a lot of the things I'm singing about in them still are still problems in the in society today and still need to be addressed and well, shouted at. So it's kind of funny because uh, I think I've matured in in certain ways and my songs and lyrics have become more complicated melodically, lyrically, but at the same time that there's this essence of what I was angry about in the Avengers and it's still um, it's still a situation that needs addressing so um, you know, I'll continue to address it and that could you have imagined but did you ever imagine in the 70s that you would still be performing Avengers music now I don't think I imagined anything like half a week or a month ahead of time. Right, right, right. (laughs) I felt like there was a period in my life where I felt like every three years, if I turned around and looked at where I was living, possibly who I was living with, um, what I was doing, it seemed like a 360. It seemed like a total change. But now, looking back on the kind of broader range, uh, it doesn't. I feel kind of like the same person, so um, it, it, I can't imagine my earlier self saying, like, who the hell is that? Um, 
she's not me or anything. I think and it's hard, to, yeah, it's hard to imagine my 19-year-old self, but uh, I think I would be sympathetic <laughs> to my 50-something-year-old self. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then it raises the question, does performing Avengers material from time to time keep that other self current for you? Well, I just was thinking that when you were asking me the question earlier, um, maybe the opportunity to scream and the opportunity to sing Avengers songs and feel this outrage is actually interrupting some current, more subtle outrage I would express in in newer songs. Mm. Um, but I, <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's true. It's, it's really kind of hard to gauge um, how doing this, doing Avengers material affects the kind of things I'm writing today. Mm-hmm. Um, every now and then I have the Avengers do one of my later songs. Uh, we've played On Borrowed Time, which is on the on Market Street album, and we've also played USSA, which is kind of a funky song. Yeah. Um, that's on the album, and that song actually was written in the eighties and never got recorded by an earlier acoustic band. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just were having fun with that, and that one actually is sort of the punkiest sounding song on the new on the solo record. But um, yeah, and then occasionally with my solo bands, we do you know Corpus Christi or the American in Me. Not always, but sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's always kind of interesting. But you know how people have performance nightmares? My my performance nightmare, which has been kind of the same one over the last 20 years, is that I'm on stage and there's a big audience. And then suddenly I look around and I see who's on stage with me. And it's like a weird conglomeration of different lineups of my solo bands and Avengers. <laughs> and I'm thinking... Oh my God! What song do all these people know? <laughs> so you don't know what to sing, right? That's great. <laughs> That's an interesting problem to have in terms of, but you do have to probably be a little bit uh, uh, intentional about about separating the two. Um, I, I don't. I, I mean it. They're kind of naturally separated, so... Well, I guess that's true. There is no more Avengers writing. Is that true? Yes. Right. People okay. keep saying, you know, how about some new songs? And I like, I have, you know, 10, 12 albums of new, songs, new right. material. Go listen to that. Right. Go um, catch up. The, it, I feel... I think I would feel a little funny trying to write new Avengers songs. To me, the Avengers songs are what they are, and... and um, I'm not sure that I can add to that. Well, it's a different canon. time. It's just a different time. And I think especially, you know, some of the older, quote, punk bands can write more music and it's just about their style. But I think the Avengers were so explosive and so uh, there was just so much spirit in the moment that, that I think you're right about that. You know. yeah. And it's awesome also, that you were playing. Yes. The, also, we wrote as a group, you know, all four of us wrote together. And, I mean, I I play now with um, the original guitar player, Greg, and I would say he and I were the core of a lot of the songs that got written, but basically we tried to write as a group. And although I wrote most of the lyrics, I didn't write all of them. There's a few songs that Danny contributed lyrics to. So, I, I don't know. I guess I, should, I would feel odd writing something and saying it's an Avengers song without the original four people mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And um, so your discography post-Avengers is probably 10 albums or more. Um, you have uh, Your website is Penelope.net. Is that where people can um, find all of your music? Yeah, they are able to go on and listen to every 
single album I've released, except for the two albums that are that were on Warner Brothers. Um, everything else is up there and can be streamed. And the Avengers records are up there as well. So whenever people want to hear it, they can go there. And then, you know, of course, if they want to download or order from you, that's also very sweet. But they can listen to it basically mm-hmm. for free. Cool. <laughs> And uh, will you have copies of your own personal material for sale at the for well the New York show in your European tour? I guess I better <laughs> bring some. Well, first you got to we, figure out um, the instruments. Yeah, yeah. I hope that's more important. Uh, we have um, uh, a new a reissue of the Pink album coming out, and that's what I'm kind of concentrating on. Mm-hmm. bringing and then I will also bring definitely some of my last release and some of my earlier uh releases as well but probably we'll focus on the on on Market Street and the Pink album. And why is the uh the Pink album just being re- re-released now? Well, it got re-released 3 years ago and that licensing deal ended and we um are going with a a new label Superior Viaduct, which is a um, San Francisco area based label, and they're really good at reissues and they really care. They reissued and, some seven inches for you guys. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're also close personal friends of mine. So perfect. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I we just needed to get a, a new reissue out, and I and uh, Superior Viaduct is the perfect label. So. We're hopefully we'll be on them for a while, and it will not go out of print again. The vinyl is not coming out till October, November, mm-hmm. but the CD with some new liner notes by Byron Coley is going to be in my hand when it comes to New York. Oh, great! Very, very. It'll cool. be in the stores like a couple of weeks after that, I think. And if I can ask you to kind of think back, what was happening in your life? when you formed the adventures like what were you listening to what were th- was it obvious like being a band was a solution to something or what was going on well i was going to the art institute i just started my first year at the art institute and i was focusing on painting and printmaking and punk this is just the dawn of 1977 and punk was just kind of poking its head up in San Francisco. The first shows were happening. Blondie, the Ramones came out. Um, and some local bands like Crime and the Nuns. And I was going out to clubs. I guess they let people under 21 into the clubs. <laughs> the most of them must have been 18 and over or something. Anyway, I was going there with friends. And, um, and one of my friends, Danny, started... To, decided he was starting a band, and I decided I was going to be a singer. I, I was listening to Patti Smith. She was a big influence um, prior to, the, you know, the more punk kind of stuff. And I, along the lines of feeling like I could do anything, I was like, I'm going to be the singer in your band. Nice. <laughs> and we just did it. It, didn't, it wasn't a lot of planning or forethought. Mm-hmm. I really had planned to be a, a painter, um, and I was in art school, so everything was going along fine. And then suddenly I was like, hey, I'm going to take a little left turn right. and sort of veered off for a long period of my life. And uh, didn't you recently go back to school? I did. Uh, I recently went back to SF State because, of course, I couldn't afford San Francisco Art Institute <laughs> um, and more. It's turned into a very expensive private school. Um, I went to SF State and got a BA in, in printmaking and painting. And I painted the picture on the cover of uh, on Market Street. The self portrait. You have it. Yeah, the yeah. self portrait. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's kind of what I'm what I'm into is um, portraiture, figurative painting. And um, on Penelope.net, is any of your artwork up? Or how can can listeners find your artwork? I have a separate website called PenelopeHouston.com. Oh, okay. That features all my fine art stuff. Excellent. 
And and so what is what's your uh, your process like? I mean, do you do you print at home? Do you paint at home? I do paint at home. I have printed at home. It's a, it's a little difficult, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but mostly I paint at home. And I have the easel is actually set up in my bedroom. Nice. <laughs> Oil paint, so it's probably not that great, but. I, I kind of remove everything. I remove all the wet paint from the room when I'm when I'm not painting. So mm-hmm. the easel is just huge and it stays there. That's where the best light is in my house. Well, then so. that's where you have to set it up. Then that's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, a, a listener wants to know what's the um, uh, state of San Francisco now. I guess in terms what's the, of, I guess in terms of what's happening creativity creatively wise and I guess people getting priced out like what's it what's that area like now Well it is it's sad there's a lot of people getting um pushed out because of the housing situation and the number of um yeah how much money people can make by just Flipping their houses over and either selling or renting to um, people in the tech industry, which is really kind of demoralizing. Mm-hmm. But I live in Oakland, which is sometimes compared to Brooklyn, and, and it's a lot easier. There's a lot more space, and there's kind of a scene happening there. Um, as far as, you know, the local music scene, there's still a lot of creativity here. There's still a lot of people. I think what's happened is instead of people saying San Francisco, now they just say Bay Area, and it includes some more affordable towns <laughs> in the East Bay generally. Mm-hmm. So, um, But, yeah, there's still lots and lots of new bands, and there's punk houses where people play, and there's, you know, Gilman Street, and there's... Uh, like electronic music scene happening, um, lots and lots of regular normal venues where touring bands come and play. Um, there's yeah, you can go out and see shows every single night of the week. You've got the energy and time, cool. money. But um, yeah, it's you know for me, what I do, I work with a kind of small number of people, and. I really only record an album every, I don't know, at the very earliest, every four years, but more like getting longer and longer (laughs) between my albums. Mm. So for me, you know, it's a more insular thing. It's not like I'm playing out all the time. Usually I just hang out and wait for some kind of a crazy Avengers uh, offer to come up and, and, you know, base a tour around that. So, and that's a, it's you know it's it's a little hard for me to speak for the struggling young bands of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I guess understood. And um, in life, what um, what person or circumstance would you say has been your greatest single teacher? Um, I would say my mother. Uh, my mother raised us sort of single-handedly um and she's a musician she was she got her uh her phd at stanford in music and she was the one who really let me feel that number one art and music are the most important things in creativity and number two don't hold yourself back you know do what you can do and um be independent so I would that's who I would say is my most influential person. Wow. Very, very cool. And uh, what was your favorite record when you were 10 years old? Um, I don't think I actually was listening to records when I was 10 years old. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any well, memory of that, but so the first record I bought was um, Cat Stevens. Oh wow! I think it was tea, it was tea for the children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is funny. 
Awesome. That was it. That kind of, that is, in some ways that makes sense. So, I mean, you know, catapulting you forward several decades. <laughs> there's a certain well there's a certain centeredness to to some of his work and it's quiet but but uh there is some some levity there yeah, yeah. i think some earlier stuff that i listened to that maybe was influential um from like the older brother of a friend of mine is uh um Moe Allison. uh mm. he always had a very acerbic wit and then um, Bonzo Dog Band, um, uh, who are just totally bonkers, basically. Yes, yes. And, and um, uh, I listen to a lot of, um, uh, what are they called? The Incredible String Bands. And uh, that group with, oh, I went to go blank. Some early English, uh, in the 60s kind of folk on the English variety. Pentangle oh, right. is one of them. Um, and it's weird because then later, when I started to listen to Patti Smith and Lou Reed and uh, their kind of pre-punk stuff, I forgot that I had listened to all this early folk. And there was a point when with the Avengers when people, when I told people, they said, what kind of music is this? I was telling them it was folk music because we were making our own, we were making it up ourselves and we were performing, you know, in little garages to our friends and it was just people's music for the people nice. instead of like giant dinosaur rock bands playing giant arenas. Right, right. And, um, so I felt like, you know, we had brought, punk was bringing music back to people. But I didn't realize at that time when I was joking about it that I was actually end up doing folk music, what people call, what people call folk music later. Right, right. So it was, it was kind of funny. Well, it was a time when there wasn't really hard categories. So, you, yeah, you, you said you were making it up, you know, as you went. So that's what you called it. Yeah. Very cool. yeah. Hey, did your mom go to your shows? Um, she has been to some of my shows, but um, I grew up in Seattle, so it would only be when oh, I see. when my various bands were up there. And I think, I don't know if she ever actually saw the Avengers ever mm-hmm. play. Mm-hmm. If that may be too loud for her. <laughs> but she certainly listened to all my records um, over and over again. Very cool. Very good. Well, I yeah. know that you have to get to work. And uh, we don't want you to be late. And thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to talk to us. And uh, thank you for putting New York on your itinerary. You know, you're really seen as a trailblazer. And I can just hear that your spirit is still unstoppable. And uh, <laughs> you've got, you know, your passion is, is there. And that's an amazing gift. So thank well, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I'm going to put up your links here. It's Penelope.net for uh, streaming music and then PenelopeHouston.com for your art. Um, playing the Avengers will be playing at the Bell House on uh, Tuesday, August 4th. And uh, Penelope, thank you so much for making the time. Yes, thank and, you so uh, much for I- having me. I have to see everybody, all the listeners out there in the audience be great yes and uh have a good day at work okay. Thanks for <laughs> thank you